What's going on, guys? I want to share a story with you guys today. It's not the best story, but January 22nd is the worst day of my life. Okay, so I'm 11 years old, chilling. No, probably talking shit to the teacher or something. You know, in school, 11 years out, you know. Uh, they called me down to the office. I'm just thinking in my head, damn, one of the teachers just snitched on me or something. And the motherfucking told on me. I'm like, uh, not knowing what to expect when I get down there. So, I go down there. And my mom is in the office. I'm like, fuck, they didn't call my mama too. I just I just knew I was in trouble, you know? Nowadays, kids like, I don't give a fuck. Call my mom, you need her number. But back in the day, nigga, I was scared to get my mama called. I swear to God, I was scared. But, um, <clears throat> so when I get to the office, my mom's in there crying like, like, <laughs> it's not funny. Like, I'm just saying like, 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 like can't even talk crying. And I'm just like, what the fuck did they tell her I didn't did? Damn, I'm, I'm, and I got the backtracking and like thinking like, damn, what the fuck did I do? I didn't even know what I did. I'm like, mom, what's wrong? Like, what's wrong? And my uh, little brothers and them got the walking in, and Jasmine got the walking in. And I'm just like, what is going on, Ma? What's wrong? And she was like, Destiny got a tumor. And I'm like, what the fuck is a tumor? I ain't know what it was. I ain't know. I ain't had no phone. I couldn't Google it. <laughs> Shit. I didn't know what it was. So I'm like, what do you mean she has a tumor? She was like, she has a tumor, and that's why her arm's been hurting, because it was pinching a nerve in her arm, and it's pinching a nerve in her arm, going down, wrapped around her spine, and sitting underneath the one lung. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, and I just, I just could not understand it. At just being that young, I just couldn't understand it. And even though I was that young, that's why probably why I had problems now, because yeah, I didn't understand that. But I was treated like an eleven year old. But I'm saying everybody has feelings, so that's when it comes to the disrespect level. And I don't care if somebody's eight years old. 10 years old, it don't matter. Everybody deserve respect. So that's why I have a problem with respect now. Nah, like, I don't care who you are, how old you are. I feel like people should be respected regardless. I don't think I should be any, treated any differently because I'm 11 years old. None of that. So we got back to the house. I'm like, she okay? Where she at? She was like, she's at grandma's house. So we went over to grandma's house. And I'm like, that's she okay? And I'm 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 like, she she come out the house all fine and stuff. I'm thinking she about to be crying and stuff. She was so fine for us, you know. She ain't want us to see her upset or worried or any of that. She was just okay for us. And I that's one of the strongest women I probably know, you know what I'm saying? She was just so strong just for her siblings. That was a real definition of an older sibling, I tell you that much. So, boom. She get to going through doctor's appointments and MRIs, CAT scans, all that stuff. And they're like, we need to do surgery immediately. And I'm thinking, 
surgery. I don't know, I just thought everything bad when it came to surgery. So they had to figure out what it was. She had a rare cancer. She had a cancer like a lot of older people get, like B-cell lymphoma. She, when they said she had it, I'm like, damn. I mean, I ain't really know nothing about cancer. I just didn't know nothing. Mind you, I'm 11 years old. So, um, after that, she went to surgery. My heart is just like beating. We ain't, I ain't been to school since I found this out. Like I was trying to like spend the most time with her as possible, you know? Cause I'm saying life ain't promised and I knew that then, you know? That's why I'm like, you got somebody you love, make sure you let them know, you know? So I'm just chilling. I ain't been to school, none of that. And um, she came out of surgery and her uh, her arm wasn't working. Like her whole, like left side of her body was like acting up and stuff, you know? And But she learned how to walk again, but her arm still was not, it was just, it wasn't working. And I was like, Damn, I was mad at the doctors and shit, you know, but I don't, it wasn't even their fault, though, you know. But I was just mad at everybody because I ain't know who to be mad at, you know. I ain't know. So, she in the hospital, University of Michigan. That's probably one of the best hospitals ever, and I say that. They treated us so good, you know. Stayed there, like, practically, we lived there. Like, for real, like, we was in that boy every day. They, we had covers. They gave her the biggest room just so we can be there with her. And it was sad because it was sometimes I was being a little selfish and shit. And my cousin Jalea and my cousin Bree, like, when they first found out she had cancer and stuff, uh, like, wanted to stay up at the hospital with her. And I just didn't understand that it was a girl thing. All I understand is, is this is my sister, you know? I ain't understand, I ain't even care about all the other bullshit. All I cared about is this is my sister. And I feel like if anybody should be staying with her, it should be her siblings, you know what I'm saying? But I guess I was selfish, so I threw a big ass temper tantrum that day. Like, it was really uncalled for it. And it was crazy, so a couple of weeks go by, they giving her chemotherapy and stuff, and she started waking up and seeing her hair in the bed. Her hair was just kept falling out. And she just was like, she ain't wanna do it no more. So um, she went to um, my barber, which was our uncle, and he cut it all off. I couldn't even see that. I stayed in the car. I couldn't. I stayed in the car. And I was just like, she came back to the car and I was just crying and crying. And she like, Trey, she looked at me and was like, Trey, stop crying. Or you gonna make me cry. And I was just like, that made me cry even more. I'm like, shit, that's... Damn, it made me cry even more. I'm like, dang, I'm gonna do that. Relax. But it was a crazy experience. So, went by in the hospital, went by, everything going good. I mean, she'll tell us she all right, but you know how, I mean, I'm not saying we twins or nothing, but you just know like we was uh a year and nine months apart. That's how we're that's how far we are from each other. A year and nine months. But it's maybe just a sibling thing. You just know when something's not right. And she'll just be like, I'm okay. I'm okay. And I just know she's not okay. And then it was time for us to go home because we had to start going to school and stuff because you know how the system is. 
So I'm like, I gotta go back to school and stuff. And then she just started crying. And like, she was like, she didn't want us to go and stuff. I still remember we had all our, this is at the stand weeks in the hospital where we had all our, um, our stuff bagged up in a little clear bag. And uh, we took all our stuff, you know, and she just started crying. And I'm just, I sat there and just stared at her. Like, mom, like, let's go, let's go. And I just sat there and stared at her. And we left. But, um, I'm a baby. I'm probably all over the place. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm all over the place. But, um, yeah, so then one night come, we up all night. Uh, I just couldn't believe I was up. You know, I always went to sleep. Like, I always went to sleep early. Like, I was never the type of guy that stayed up all night. All right. Eight o'clock, come I'm tired, yawning, going. I'm going to sleep, you know. But this day, it's three o'clock in the morning, and it's three o'clock in the morning, and I'm just sitting there, chilling. I don't know what I was doing. I was just up. My grandma was there. I was in my room though. My grandma was there. My mom was there. And Destiny finally went to sleep. Cause she ain't really, she ain't really been home like that. So she went to sleep. Uh then as soon as um my grandma left, she was like, she started having a panic attack. So he called 911. Uh, Kelvin carried her. Um, uh, he got a song too. I'm gonna uh, put a song on the video in the description, or I can just play it in the video for y'all. But Calvin, he's was a good man, and still is a good guy. Still is. But as soon as my grandma left, she had a panic attack. So my mom didn't know what to do, whatever. So Calvin carried her to the living room. They called EMS. EMS came, checked their vitals, did everything. And it was like everything good. So EMS left. They was like, do you wanna go or do you wanna stay? She was like, she wanted to stay. Uh, then after that, uh, Kels carried her to the couch or whatever. And then he carried her to the couch. Oh, bad. I bite my fingernails. He carried her to the couch. Oh, uh, shit. And um, I sat there. And my mom and my grandma went outside on the balcony to smoke. So I'm just sitting there holding her hand. My cousin, Bree, she's sitting next to me. I'm just sitting there holding her hand. Like, shit, everything gonna be all right. But I ain't say nothing. I just, like, I don't know, I kind of wish I would have talked to her, like, while she was going through that. And I'm like, she breathing real shallow. So I hurry up and ran outside and told my mom, like, Ma, that's is not breathing right. And she told me, Trey, as long as she's breathing, I'm like, she got a point, you know. She's, grandma's like, it's from the panic attack and all this stuff, and I'm just like, 11 years old, not understanding. Just not understanding. And, um, after that, I'm just sitting there holding her hand. My mind racing, everything going through my head, everything. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. Then my grandma and my mom walked in. My mom on the phone and she ran to the bedroom. And when, uh, my grandma came to talk to her, uh, she touched her and was like, uh, she ain't breathing. 
me being a little scary ass nigga, I just jumped up. And uh, I was scared myself, shit. I'm like, damn, where the hand go? Jumped up, started crying or whatever. But um, it was crazy. Um, so uh, Kelvin and Grandma uh, is sitting there. They're doing CPR on her now. And I'm just like, I couldn't cry. I couldn't breathe. They don't have to bother call EMS for me, shit. Nigga, I'm standing against the wall just in shock. Like, I know this shit ain't true. You know what I'm saying? I know it ain't true. You know, it's too soon, bro. It's too soon. Then, then, uh, they call EMS. EMS, and I was just like, you know how you, like, in a, like, a dream that feel real? Like, I couldn't talk. I couldn't do nothing. I'm just like a bystander. It's like I'm watching everything go on. I watched them do, doing CPR. It's like everything going in slow motion. They sitting there doing CPR on her. As soon as they called 911, I swear 911 was there. 911 was there. Already there. So then they pulled up. They put her on the stretcher. They had the things, got the shock in her too. It wasn't a response, too. It wasn't a response. And they cut her shirt, but where they was shocking her at, she had these two things in her chest, we call them tubies, where they can just inject the chemo and stuff. So that's how I knew, like, because they hurt it real bad to her. And like she could be sleep or anything, but if anybody touched those, that'll hurt her. And she'll like, 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 dude, no, nah, she ain't fucking with it. But um, so they shocking her. She ain't responding. She had on a yellow University of Michigan shirt. They cut it up. I said we still got that shirt till today. They cut it up, and um. Uh, Put the thing in her throat. It was squishing the bag or whatever, whatever it's called. And then it wasn't working. So they just hurried up and just took her. Nah, it's me. I'm sitting at the house. My little siblings, not saying they don't remember, but they was just young. They were asleep. Only ones I was up was me, Calvin, and Bree. So. I'm like, my stomach hurting so bad. My stomach hurting so bad, I had to take a shit. <laughs> my, 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 my nerves just fucked up or something. I had to take a shit. Went to go take a shit. Walked past Calvin's room. No, my bad. On my way to take a shit. <laughs> I walked past Calvin's room like, okay, well, my sister gonna be all right? He's like, yeah, little bro, she gonna be good. I'm like, you know, I don't know. I just, I always believe that nigga. No matter what, I always believe that nigga. And I went to the bathroom. And I came back out. And I walked past the room and he just in there crying. And I'm just like. I already knew what the deal was, but I just ain't want to believe it. You know, so how our living room was set up, the balcony was, like, right here. The TV was right here. It was a big couch right here that she passed, well, that she was on. And it was, like, a little couch. And the front door was behind me. So I'm just sitting on the couch. I'm just sitting on the couch. Just waiting. My heart beating fast. I can't catch my breath. Then I'll hear the door open. I was so scared to look back. So, so scared to look back. So scared to look back. Like, really, really scared. I heard steps. I heard more steps. I heard more steps. 
and I just turned around. Just hope, man. My sister was gonna be with them. And she wasn't. My life ain't never been the same since then. It's not good enough for me not being here with you. Mm. It's not gonna work for me. Nobody can equal you. I know. I'm gonna sip on the drinks I fucked up. Don't know that won't help me. I'm trying to think about if you were here with me, why would you tell me? And even though I know you're gone, I'm not alone Last night I saw you in my dream and Every single night can't wait to fall asleep, eh? Hey, Cause you are unforgettable Why did you have to go? Ooh, nah, nah You never did wrong, never hurt nobody Could be why God took you in a hurry But can we just talk cause I need somebody Where are you now? Tell nobody no, I don't tell nobody No, you can't buy time with money But I wouldn't care how much I'd lose Just for one more day with you Yo, yo, 642 Why the hell my sister calling me at 642? She barely calls, maybe she just got me confused But something told me I should pick it up to see if she's cool Hello? What's wrong? What happened? Stop crying, what you saying? I can't understand it So much pain in the voice, I started to panic What the hell is going on? I can only imagine You said you were dropping off the kids in your car Only a couple blocks away, it wasn't even that far But then the truck came out of nowhere, driving right through the stop I don't need to hear the rest, just need to know where you are You said that you and all the kids were doing fine Couple cuts and bruises, you and the kids will be alright But our sister fresh, I need you right there by her side They flew her to the hospital, they didn't tell me why So I picked up my father I'm doing 90 on the 50 when the cop pulled me over But chose to put away the ticket When I told him what happened and said I gotta get there quickly Then he followed us there when he didn't have to But he did it And I can't even lie, I can't even lie Haven't even got inside when I start to cry Walk up to the front desk, ask if you're alright I can tell that something's wrong, see it in the eyes My dad beside me and she took us down the hall I can't wait to see you and to tell you about it all You probably think I'm stupid, ask me what I'm crying for you Felt like it was hours before we finally reached the door The room that we were Inside you weren't even there Just an empty room filled with a couple of chairs My heart is fucking beating all this pain in the air And my stomach fucking turning, all I'm feeling is fear The doctor walked in right behind with three nurses Said they did all that they could but nothing that they did was working And I hate to have to tell you and I know you don't deserve it But your sister didn't make it and my heart just hit the surface like I turn around to my father, try to break him the news But I ain't even have to cause he already knew He don't really speak much English, but what's that gotta do? When he was seeing, feeling every broken heart in the room Shit, how the fuck am I gonna tell my brother? Fuck that, how the fuck am I gonna tell my mother? How the fuck my nephew gonna grow up without a mother? He's only two with a father who wish he wore a rubber It's crazy how you never know, crazy how it go Why the ones you love the most are the first to go? You were always taking care of me when I was broke So I just want you to know I look at Jeremiah and I see you every time And I know he ain't my son, but I treat him like he's mine You ain't never gotta worry, fresh, I swear that he'll be fine Give him everything I have, every dollar, every dime Till you lose somebody, you won't know how it feels I pray you never do, because I swear that it kills Dad leaves a pain that nobody can heal But the love leaves a memory nobody can steal Cause you are unforgettable Why did you have to go? Never did wrong, never hurt nobody Could be why God took you in a hurry But can we just talk cause I need somebody Where are you now? I don't tell nobody No, no, I don't tell nobody No, you can't buy time with money But I wouldn't care how much I'd lose Just for one more day with you